Hello, my dear gardening friends. Isn't garden looking lovely and lovelier by the day? I love how spring wakes up and all the greenery is suddenly there. Today I'm going to talk about a very important topic, and the topic is how I fertilize my garden. Just a disclaimer is that the way I approach my garden is very natural. I come from a tradition where my family in Ukraine had a land and had a seed. And that's how process went. Seeds went into the land and the soil produced fruits and vegetables. So I try to do the same in my garden. So fertilization is fairly easy here in my garden because I invest so much in healthy soil. I basically let soil do all the job. So follow along and I will show you what I do in spring to make sure that my garden will be thriving through the year. So in my garden, I divide all the happy inhabitants, all the plants into three different categories. The first category is the plants which are taking care of to themselves. They don't need fertilization, they don't need watering. They're just big, usually they are big shrubs or trees and they know what they're doing and they don't need me to thrive. So that's the first category. The second category is uh, plants. Usually they're middle size uh, shrubs and annuals, perennials, which are tough, but still I need to pay attention to watering and I do need to fertilize them. And the last category is my super performers, my roses, my uh, butterfly bush, other plants which are, I'm showcasing in front of the garden, my hydrangeas, which are heavy performers in the garden. They demand space and attention and they need a lot of uh, fertilization, a lot of water to keep them going especially roses. Roses are such um, highly developed plants in the garden. They need a lot of attention to perform well. You're not going to kill a rose if you're not going to fertilize it well and not water well, but rose is not going to be producing so many wonderful blooms. And of course we are expecting those wonderful blooms in our gardens. So I'm going to show you what I'm doing. And uh, excuse the corn holes, my kids were playing here. So here we have, this is my first bush, which I fertilized this year. This is butterfly bush. Uh, it's a heavy performer in my garden. So what I did to this bush, I fertilized it with a Espoma general fertilizer. And I probably gave it two cups around, as, a, as they say, around the drip line. So butterfly bush is sharing this space with tulips and I didn't want to spread fertilizer on tulips. So I made it kind of a little bit closer. And then I went ahead and I digged a lot of, I harvested a lot of um, uh, compost. And by the way, I counted all my bags. I have 13 bags of compost and I almost used all the bags from previous year. So all the stuff which I cleaned up through the garden to prepare it for spring, I collected 13 big heavy bags of compost. So in case you're not composting in your garden, I encourage you to do that because it's such a good stuff. You're missing so much if you're disposing of all that goodness and then you have to buy fertilizer. So if you can, I encourage you, here's the video how I do it. It's an excellent thing. For example, this spring, when I, was getting, when I was getting all that goodness out of those bags, I realized, gosh, I have so much of it. So I used a lot of it on roses, on all my plants, on flower beds, and it's not 100% um, aged, but the aging will continue in the garden. So basically what I did here, I put a layer of fertilizer and I put a layer of uh, compost. And that's it. That's how I'm going to leave it. Um, butterfly bush is famous for having very shallow roots. It's not a demanding shrub. I wouldn't say so. If I would do nothing for it, which I did in some of the previous years, I did nothing for this bush. It was doing very well. But once I started to do additional fertilizers on it, natural fertilizers, this bush started to perform better. So if you're not going, not going to pay attention to a butterfly bush, you're not going to kill it. It will take care of it itself. But if you want an excellent performance in the garden, you're going to fertilize it and you will get it. Now, next to, by the way, this is 
a honeysuckle major villa. I trimmed it. This honeysuckle was twinkled around with my butterfly bush. So I kind of formed all this area here, trimmed it well. He got a little bit of fertilizer too. Honeysuckle is not demandful. He can be there with no extra treatment. But on this side, I do have my beautiful rose, uh, which is sharing the space, maybe a little bit too close. Uh, with these shrubs, three, three shrubs here. So I had to be very careful how I fertilized it. Uh, the treatment for this rose, since roses are heavy feeders, right? I used the uh, Esporma uh, rose fertilizer, which is a natural fertilizer, and I like to use natural fertilizers. And I covered it with uh, uh, well-aged cow manure. I am a big fan of well-aged cow manure. My soil here in my garden is neutral. And when I add cow manure, it brings the soil into uh, acidity side a little bit, not much. And that's what roses love. So that was a treatment for this rose. Now let's move further and look at my beautiful boxwoods. Look at this. I'm very much impressed by uh, this big boxwood. It's called Green Mountain. Look how lovely it grows. And by the way, it never changed its color through winter. It was very green and never had any browning or bronzing. These little guys, winter, uh, what's the name of them? Uh, green gem. They are mini boxwoods. They got some browning, some bronzing, but not this one, not Green Mountain. And I love how he's full and happy and he's producing so many new shoots. But when you compare these two sides of those boxwoods, this side, this mini boxwoods are not doing very well and I really don't know why. So my suspicion is that either I didn't water these guys well or what, I have no idea. I think one of the viewers, I think Marilyn said to me that maybe I didn't cover uh, the root the roots with soil or maybe they went through the winter without protection. So what I did, I fertilized them very lightly and I used uh, a mix of garden soil and uh, cow manure. I know that boxwoods don't want to be bothered with fertilization. They want to have their quiet time. Boxwood do boxwoods are happy to be by themselves, to have their own company. So I don't want to do heavy fertilization of those boxwoods. So the same treatment I did here. Now my vegetable bed. Last year, I really prepared it very well. And uh, I'm sure there are a lot of good happy warmies. I'm going to put a netting around it. And what I did, I did a little coat of uh, garden compost again. So all this area would be ready to be planted soon. So basically my approach to fertilization in the garden is very specific and depends on the plant. Um, I can do it because my garden is not very big, but obviously people who have bigger gardens have to do more of a wholesale approach, I would say it. But here in my garden I can say, okay, this beautiful abovite, look at it. It's a beautiful little fellow. He's very happy here. You see this nice tall spike at the top? It means abovite is happy and it's growing. Now, this abovite has still that brown top, uh, top, brown edges from winter. But this guy received all of, um, all purpose fertilizer. And I also covered the root system with mulch because I want this abovite to thrive here and it gets a lot of sun, which he should. This abovite loves sun, loves basking on the sun. Now what I have here, here is another uh, berry bush, which I introduced into my garden and it's gooseberries. Gooseberry bush, I grew up with gooseberries. My parents in Ukraine, probably had, I don't know, 20 gooseberry bushes. And every year we had so many of them. And you know what, here in Connecticut, all the birds are coming into my garden to eat the berries. But in Ukraine, every household has, has so many berry bushes that birds share with humans and people just don't cover any of the bushes, which is very convenient. But here, I'm sure I will have to fight with robins for, to have a little bit of my first harvest from my uh, gooseberry uh, bush. So this gooseberry bush, it's a, a heavy eater, you know, berry bushes need to produce fruits. So it was treated by cow manure and under cow manure I put uh, all-purpose fertilizer. 
So that's the story with that bush. Now we are moving back to my beautiful Clematis. Clematis also want food to perform well and they want their feet to be in cold. So I put again all-purpose fertilizer, maybe two-thirds of a cup, and I made sure that I covered the root area of Clematis with uh, mulch. Mulch is a great thing for the beginner gardeners. Do not disregard mulch. Mulch is a great thing in the garden. It makes uh, roots cool. It promotes health of the soil. Worms love mulch. And uh, generally, it's a very good thing for the plant, especially for plants uh, which like to have uh, cool roots. Here I am near my display rose, my star of my garden, Lady of Shalott. And I didn't fertilize it yet. Last year I added a lot of uh, well-rotted cow manure here, so this rose has plenty of food for now. But it's a heavy performer in my garden and you will see it in two months. It's going to be blooming magnificently at the beginning of June. So in order for it to happen, I need to fertilize it. I'm using rose stone. And you know what? When people look at my roses, they ask me a question, which fertilizer do you use? And they imply that if you use this specific best fertilizer, then your rose will perform so much better. You know what, when I go to the store and I don't have a, a, they don't have a Sporma uh, rose tone fertilizer, I just buy regular fertilizer or I just go for Job's fertilizer. It doesn't really matter which fertilizer you use as long as it's natural and your soil is very healthy. Uh, I can't uh, underline uh, enough how important it is to have a very healthy soil. And by the way, I did a video last year about the health of the soil. It's right here. I do encourage you to see it and to make your own opinion to use artificial fertilizers or not. So uh, fertilizing is quite easy. Roses are falling into the category of heavy feeders and uh, uh, heavy performance in the garden. So by eye, I just use, I can't use the drip line because the space is shared by boxwoods. So I'm just applying fertilizer all over the place. And since I am going to use mulch on top of it, I don't need to mix it with soil. So approximately I'm using probably two cups of it. Okay. My husband said, how about the center? Well, it's kind of too close to the roots. So a little bit. All right, that's it. And now I'm going to apply mulch. I'm going to apply mulch heavily. You know what, I need more mulch here. Yeah, I need more mulch. Okay. All right, last year I had rabbits right there trying to build the house. They were fighting me, they gave up the idea. So maybe I'm going to move these stones away and maybe rabbits will just forget that they were here. Plus they're not here anymore, I'm hoping. All right, eventually I will put more uh, ground cover and I will cover all the roots of these boxwoods. You see how these boxwoods are so small and I'm so impatient. You know what I'm going to do? Maybe what I will do, I will plant in the middle, I will plant more of boxwoods. I do have extras, so maybe I will do that because otherwise I'm going to wait forever for this hedge to happen finally. Here, look at this, what I have here. You know what this is? This is my Adelaide Diolene rose, a beautiful rambling rose, which I received. I'm going to put this rose at the back of that arbor 
and you see how baby it is it's a small baby i'm going to i didn't introduce it right away into the soil because i wanted to become a little bit healthier so i put it into the pot and i put the pot behind the steps when the sun is shining it's not going to hit the pot a little bit giving a little bit of shade and i will wait for i don't know some time for this rose to start growing and maybe in the middle of summer I will replant it into the garden when it has stronger root system and already when I opened the package the roots of this uh, rambler was, was so strong they were already starting to circle the pot so rambler is such a strong rose rambling roses they have such a gusto for life uh, I noticed it in the roots they were skinny but very very long and very quick to search for nutrients so I'm not going to keep this rose too long in the pot maybe a month and then i will put it out into the garden i will introduce so rose adelaide diolines it's a white uh, yellow rambler but for now this is how i do my garden it's not as difficult and again if people are facing difficult soil conditions for example people moved into a new garden into newly developed lot and definitely there are a lot of concretes and buried debris on, on, under the soil level and it's just covered with a little uh, chunk of, uh, of topsoil. Of course people have to do extra to fertilize but if you have a good soil and uh, you keep it healthy I truly believe that no extra special things are needed. I always remember my dad saying my dad said you have a soil you have a seed and then you have a garden and it doesn't have to be super complicated super expensive and super difficult to learn so i'm hoping that these videos are helping you to become good gardeners and truly enjoy your gardens because gardens make our lives happier and better so happy gardening i will see you next time